Good day everyone, this is Nemesis and today we are going to take a look at the Condition Mancer build and the Condition type build. So, as always, we are going to start from the beginning, going to make a quick review on how to correctly make your Condition build. I will also leave an annotation on the video if you are really new to the game and you require a tutorial from a more beginner's point of view. So, condition mancer, condition type build. Conditions, as I've always said, do not have the ability to perform a critical strike hit and draw all of their power from condition damage, the stat condition damage and condition duration. And they act solely upon these two and in very interesting ways you will see. So, what does a, a Condition Mancer need? Well, he needs a weapon that applies Condition. And we know from previous videos that the Scepter applies Condition every hit, applies a Bleed every hit. The second skill applies Bleeding again and has Cripple, which is useful for kiting purposes. And the third hit gives Life Force and Damage increase for each condition on the target. The secondary weapon should be the dagger because it further applies condition and also weakness which is used very well when you are going to get hit. It's also an AOE same as grasping then. And we have deathly swarm which bounces and transfers up to three conditions from you to the target. This is relevant in various ways depending on the scenario. This is also an, sort of an AoE. So we can see right off the bat that conditions are meant to be AoE. Very well. We move on to slot skills. We have healing. Feast on your condition, gaining health for each one consumed. So each time you have condition on yourself, you can get extra healing. This also synergizes well with Deathly Swarm. And as you can see, we already have two skills that are meant to deal with condition. One is each time you get conditions on you, you turn them against the enemy that set them on you, or you can extra heal. So there are two ways of countering the conditions on yourself. Second and third, I'm going to take a look at the second and third utility skill and leave the first one for later and you will see why. The second utility skill is Bloody's Power. Gives self bleeding, a very nice amount of bleeding on your target for 30 seconds. This is actually more than 30 seconds, but the tooltip doesn't get upgraded. I have discussed this in the SPVP Condition Master dedicated video. I will also leave an annotation to that video uh, so you can check it out. The thing you need to remember is that bleeding duration runes any kind of bleeding duration does not upgrade the tooltip and how it works if i have 100 percent bleeding duration then my bleeding from bloody power will not stay on the target for 30 seconds it will say stay on the target for one minute and will not do 7k damage will do 14k damage this also gives 10 stacks of might which is as you can see 339 condition damage moving on the third utility skill, I always take Epidemic. So, Bloody Power and Epidemic is a must in a condition type build. Why is that? Well, Bloody Power guarantees you two stacks of bleeding on the target, and we know that bleeding stacks in intensity, therefore, you have two stacks, and you only need to apply an extra 23 more. So, that's really good from the start. And if this hit crits, it can apply further, even further bleeding, but we'll get to that in a few moments. So, we have Bloody Power and Epidemic. Epidemic spreads all the conditions you have on the target to five nearby foes in a radius of 600. It also has a range of 1200. So, as you can see, uh, it's starting to shape up a bit into an AOE type build. Because this is a Grasping Dead is AoE, Deathly Swarm is AoE, Enfeebling Blood is AoE, 
and we also have epidemic which is on a 12 second cooldown if traded so condition damage doesn't do so much damage on a single target because by default it's a dot damage over time it's a condition therefore a dot as in damage over time so damage over time was never as high as bursting damage bursting damage is meant to be immediate and high potential immediate single target damage condition damage is more of a over time and it's meant to be used against multiple opponents and since it has no point to burst down multiple opponents because then what would conditions be used for so the balance is like this bursting is sort of a single target and conditions are more for aoe purposes for the necromancer so we use epidemic and as you can see it adds self vulnerability and we add self bleeding from bloody spout now we have the option of blinding the enemy and turning these two self vulnerability and self bleeding into an offensive attack or we can heal on top of that and because we have self vulnerability and self bleeding on ourselves we heal extra okay moving on to traits i have discussed many times in the past why we do not go into the spite trait line for a condition type build it has condition duration but if we take a look at the spite trait line none of the other minor or major traits have anything remotely related to condition as i've said many times this condition duration is for vulnerability stacking and vulnerability is used for bursting for the necromancer and therefore it requires condition duration in order to be able to stack at least a decent amount of vulnerability on the target so you can burst on top of that so we move down we have precision and condition damage we know we don't need power power does nothing for condition damage but we have precision and condition damage a lot of people have asked themselves why do you have precision on a condition trait line why because precision is the equivalent of critical strike chance and uh, bleeds last i remember don't crit bleeds don't crit well the answer to that lies in the first minor trait barb precision critical hits have a chance a 66 percent chance to cause bleeding so this this is it this answers the question your damage is gained by stacking bleeds bleeds do not crit but stack in intensity so if you have one bleed that has a thousand damage over 10 seconds you can add an extra bleed on top of that that has another 1000 damage over 10 seconds and you st you you all of a sudden do 2000 damage over 10 seconds and your dps doubles from 100 dps to 200 dps okay so we move along this straight path and we try to find traits that further amplify our chosen path so the first one should be something bleed related therefore hemophilia 20 percent increased bleeding duration that's 20 percent more bleeding damage we move on we see gain fury for five seconds when entering death shroud that's used for a different type of hybrid builds but it's a minor trait that is uh, fury is never you can never go wrong with some extra fury the next major trait should be master of corruption we are no longer bound like in the hybrid bit, by a certain rotation we can freely use bloody's power on cooldown same as epidemic therefore it's worth it to have a 20 percent faster recharge rate so we can use bloody's power more often therefore do high amount of bleeding more often and also gain might also spread the bleeding much sooner also because we have self vulnerability and self bleeding on our on us faster we can then use as you can see it's a 25 second cooldown on your heal and a 24 second cooldown on bloody's power and a 12 second cooldown on epidemic so we can extra heal ourselves in a nice combo the next one is 2% damage increase for each condition on your foe. 
this is uh, it's a not bad minor trait each uh, we we handle conditions and each time we add an extra condition we can do 12 percent more damage two percent more damage last one it's a very important trait lingering curse condition inflicted by the scepter skills last 33 percent longer this is a very important trait because it's the only one that breaches the 100% bleeding duration cap. You can have bleeding duration up to 100% increase and this trait will actually allow you to go to 133 bleeding duration which is the required so you can keep 25 stacks of bleeding on the target barely. So it's uh, used to maximize your damage. Now we have bleeding duration and we have chosen traits that amplify our damage in the bleeding path but we don't need toughness or boon duration or vitality or healing power or critical strike damage or life force pool or power or further condition duration because it's not worth it for the traits there's nothing we can do to increase to further increase our damage from the traits the further increase of damage will come from the gear but for the offensive part we are done why are we done for the offensive part well i've discussed in the past not only does the bleeding build use dots as in condition as in bleeds which require a certain period of time to to kick in to get the maximum benefit out of it which means you are stuck in combat for a longer period of time which means you cannot burst an opponent before it bursts you down, you cannot play that card, which means you need to be survivable. Which means all of your damage should come from one trait line, so you can focus on survivability on the other trait line. All of your damage should come from one trait line, so you can focus on survivability from the other trait line, because you have 70 points. Also, the damage may be small for a single target, but it is meant to be played as an AOE build and when you AOE a lot you aggro a lot which is further all the more reason to be more survivable so one way to be survivable is with toughness and boon duration and we know we'll get to gear in a second but we know there's such a gear as precision toughness and condition damage whenever you're not sure about the, the the gear you should take you should look at the stats it will help you make the decision of getting the gear so we go into death magic we have boon duration and toughness toughness further increases the effectiveness of our or already tough necromancer because we will take the gear with toughness you will see in a second but we also have boon duration and we don't have that many boons. Necromancer is not uh, not actually a guardian, doesn't have a million boons. And the way the Necromancer buffs himself is with Well of Power. So uh, you're not really going to use Well of Power in PV that much because you're not going to be up against a lot of mobs that constantly debuff you. And also Well of Power is on a 40 second, 45 second cooldown if you trade it so nah, not really so from the start from the principle we see we are not supposed to go so much in the death magic but let's see what happens summon a jagged horror whenever you kill a foal 30 second cooldown not a bad trade it's like an extra physical dot <laughs> it has the same effect but you can actually see the little creature poking around the second one should be ritual of protection well supply protection for three seconds when cast and you remember I left the first utility skill out. Well, we have enough damage. We have an AOE for it from Epidemic. What is left is a well. Well has really good survivability, not only for yourself, but since it's an AOE, it supports your party by acting as a debuffer. So, as you can see, we switch from the damage because we have enough. We switch to the survivability and support area and we use well of darkness because we add blindness 
that goes well with the other blindness and goes well with the utility skill in which plague form you can spam let me show you you can basically spam blindness and poison so you have three blindness uh, well more than three blindness skills so this synergizes well and if you have a single target boss or you fight a single target and you don't really need AOE you can add well of power so you further support yourself and your team by removing their condition and buffing them so as you can see right from the from the start the condition build is much more forgiving if you do the condition build right you can adapt in various situation in the support area damage is as is the damage you get from one trait line and the gear and no really there's no need to tamper with the, the damage but it's far more flexible in the support area sometimes you don't need AOE and you can switch that for an extra well each time you place a well you have three seconds of protection not only you but also your team okay moving on we have gained 20 toughness for each minion under your control um we only have one minion so if we go further we'll start losing minor traits that don't do that much for us and if we take a look at the other traits is minions vulnerability staff skills recharge faster we don't use staff so much lose a condition gain retaliation when disabled you're not going to get disabled that much and if you are in pv it's not like you can fear the target back so we should stop we should stop here but we still need more survivability we know we don't need more damage because th there is none for us we have reached our maximum damage potential so we move on we have vitality and healing mm, healing we only have one healing skill eh, doesn't do much for us but we have vitality vitality is not bad and even the healing for the healing skill with the 25 second cooldown it's not bad and we have regeneration uh, 30 second cooldown not bad not bad regeneration helps us uh, we can blind 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 and regen while healing extra not bad really shaping up to be a really survivable character siphon health is 50% more effective hmm siphon health whenever you hit a foe and it's more effective yeah that's good we siphon health whenever we hit a foe and it's 50% more effective okay next one siphon health whenever you critical hit and we know we critical hit so each time we crit we siphon health and each time we hit we siphon health and we also have regeneration and we also have healing uh, and it's 50% more effective so bloodthirst to be 50% more effective alongside siphon health whenever you hit a foe alongside siphon health whenever you crit generates a passive uh, passive healing every second and I will demonstrate what that healing means deal 5% more damage while health is above 90% well we have a lot of healing we have a lot of blindness we should be able to stay at uh, nine, over 90% of our health most of the time so 5% more damage is nice and goes well with the other 2% so 7% more damage and the last one is wells also siphon health every time they pulse so even more healing and uh, we know we are going to use a well and in some scenarios we are going to use two wells so that's double siphoning plus double siphoning from hitting and critting and all of that is 50% more effective okay so uh, this is our build it's done we have all the damage we need and we have the survivability okay we now move on to the gear so as I've said we are interested in amplifying our damage and since we, we know we can get to 133% condition duration and we don't have 
condition duration from this straight line because if we invest in this we either remove all our all our um, condition related traits or we lose all our, all our survivability none of which is characteristic to a to a bleeding build we need to get that extra bleeding duration from gear so the gear is precision toughness and condition damage why precision toughness and condition damage well we have precision condition damage and toughness but why not precision condition damage and vitality well first of all such a gear doesn't exist you have condition damage uh, vitality and healing power so condition damage vitality and healing power but we know the necromancer is not really well known for healing so um, how are you going to heal because this is the really nice or really important piece of information siphon health is 50 percent more effective and you siphon health but all the health siphoning that you do is not affected by healing power so doesn't matter if you have a lot of healing power it will do nothing for you because you see from health at the same rate regardless if you have this trait that's your 50 percent increase that's it the healing doesn't do anything for you so it's far more important to have a lot of toughness so precision toughness and condition damage the rabbit gear and in it we put two runes of the centaur two runes of the crate and two runes of the afflicted don't mind uh, it shows four out of six it's a visual bug don't mind that i only have two trust me so by putting two runes of crate two runes of centaur and two runes of the afflicted we have 50 percent plus 50 percent plus 50 percent is 45 percent bleeding increase with 25 extra that's 65 and uh, we are missing we are we are not at 100 percent yet um we are missing some bleeding duration let me see if i can fix that there we go rare veggie pizza it's 40 percent and it's expensive you can use this one and it's an overkill by one percent doesn't matter this one is cheap bowls of poultry and leek soup and we have 100 percent bleeding duration plus conditions inflicted by the scepter last 33 percent longer we are at the maximum bleeding duration potential so we move on we have precision toughness and condition damage precision toughness and condition damage the sigils superior sigil of earth 60 percent chance on critical to inflict bleeding for five seconds which goes well with part precision the second one superior sigil of corruption gain 10 condition damage time to you kill a four further increases the effectiveness of your condition damage of your bleeding damage we have the prototype fractal capacity to read precision toughness and condition damage we have tortured root these earrings are actually kind of expensive and you can get them from the trading post it's precision toughness and condition damage with a crystal cola jewel inside because as you can see i'm already at 50 percent critical strike chance just from these items i don't need any more precision because we know the sweet spot is at 50 percent critical strike chance so tortured root earrings the colossus fang with precision toughness and condition damage and again crystal cola jewel and the uh, precision toughness and condition damage rings from fractals all of these items are easily obtainable with uh, let's say from nothing with one or two weeks of worth of farm depending on your skill level and how much time you play a day you can obtain this end game build okay the stats are something i'm down level but you can still see the stats uh, I have about 1621 condition damage, 133 bleeding duration, 50% critical strike chance, 2600 armor, and about 22,000 HP. Okay, now let us test our healing capacity. 
So we have this thing. You can see I heal for for 20 and for 20 for 40, 20 for. I placed all as you can see I stacked three types of healing it's almost almost 100 and something healing per second actually it's um, this one hits twice a second and as you can see I heal almost 70 ah, where did it go anyone as you can see I heal for 36 is the on hit and the crit is Oh, region. Oh, come on, man. <laughs> and the crit is 48. So 36 and 48. And I hit twice a second, which means is actually 80 plus 70, something like that. Is about 150 healing per second. If I throw down a well, if I throw down. Come on, attack. If I throw down a well, from the well alone, I heal. Once again, so from the well alone, I heal for. I don't know, three heals popping out at the same time. Anyway, those three heals combined with the two heals I get every hit. Anyway, that's about. Um, just one second, these, these guys should be hard. I get three heals. Really? <laughs> so I get these heals so quickly because, as you can see, I see on health every time I pulse, I see on health every time I crit, and I see on health every time I hit. So the, the well actually heals you three times. On top of that, you you can heal yourself two times with your auto attacks. Therefore, it's like five times of healing. So in, when when you have a problem, you blind the enemy, and instead of going down, you go up from passive healing. And not only that, you debuff the enemy. You act as a support for your team. So this is all very nice and well. Okay, so now let's find a better place to show you the actual damage of uh, the actual potential damage of this build. But first, let us uh, understand better what bleeding duration does for a bleeding <coughs> for a bleeding build. One more. Okay, so the the calculator I am using for bleeding damage can be found on the internet at Guild Wars 2 dot hasno dot net i will leave the link in the description so <coughs> bleeding duration we know that if we have one bleed that has 1k damage over 10 seconds if you amplify that with 100 bleeding duration we have same bleed that has 2000 damage over 20 seconds okay you do overall more damage but your DPS doesn't increase at all. So why does bleeding duration increase your DPS? Well, because the bleeding lasts on the target for a longer period of time, in this case double. That means you can apply more bleeds on the target before the first applied bleed expires. So if you have, let's say, uh, 1710 condition damage, 1710 condition damage, at one stack we do 128 damage per second which is <laughs> almost and as you can see each uh, of the bleeding was taking for about that amount actually that amount so this uh, condition calculator condition damage calculator is really accurate actually so if we have 100 percent bleeding duration Let's say we, we don't apply one stack, we can apply two stacks now. Or let's say we can apply 10 stacks. We, <coughs> in general, without any bleeding duration, you can apply about 
5 to 10 stacks, but with maximum bleeding duration you can apply up to 20, 20, 25 stacks. So let's see how much damage we do at 25 stacks. We do 3200 damage per second at maximum bleeding stacks on a single target. Now, we know that the bleeding build is made to be AoE. Think of epidemic. Think of that amount. Let me show you actually. <laughs> so 3200 or five targets that's six sixteen thousand dps on five targets which is amazing some people say yeah you cannot keep yeah you cannot keep that amount of stacks on five targets at all times that's true but i didn't take into consideration the damage from normal hits the damage from life transfer in death shroud and a lot of different fa factors but still it's let's say around 15k dps on uh, five targets 15k dps on a highly sustainable support sometimes support build it's really really amazing also i wanted to bring into the discussion the difference between the condition mancer and the hybrid some people say that you lose more than half of your damage when playing a hybrid and stuff like that not really true in a bleeding spec you can maintain like uh, 23 stacks of bleeding which is almost almost 3k dps and in the hybrid you can maintain about let's say 20 which is uh, uh, 500 dps lower and in a condition build you have 1007 1700 condition damage in my hybrid you had 1100 and as you can see you lose basically you lose about 1k from the maximum 1k dps but you make up for that with the bursting potential and also your life transfer aoe is basically doubled and on top of that you have vulnerability and it's um, you compensate for that with single target more single target damage and aoe from bursting so just to be clear <coughs> if we have at 25 stacks of bleeding at the maximum bleeding we have 1100 condition damage which is the hybrid we do 2.4 k dps and we if we have 1700 which is the bleeding build we do 3.2 so from 2.4 to 3.2 we don't lose that much it's not half not even near half you don't lose half your bleeding damage so that would make the bursting spec much better in terms of damage uh, overall damage yeah overall damage it's like this the bursting build does the highest single target the hybrid does the highest overall and the uh, and the condition build that does the highest aoe damage and on top of that the bursting build uh, amplifies the effectiveness of your entire party by applying a lot of vulnerability on the target the hybrid has the highest overall damage and the condition build compensates with supporting capabilities and high survivability so it's a really nice matchup it all adds up it's um, it's really really nice okay so we are back in game <coughs> and let us see if the damage calculator was correct you should do you should do about uh, 100, 128 a tick at 1710 condition damage let's see there is a monster One hundred and twenty-eight. As you can see, two things you can notice. I'm killing a single target much slower than the bursting build. I'm also never reaching my maximum potential of 25 stacks because the target dies before that. 
and also one target I can simply auto attack to death and the passive healing will just override everything. The passive healing I'm getting helps me to basically stay alive. But where the bleeding build actually shines is in AoE scenarios. So let's find some many mobs. Okay, we found our many mobs. So. Ah. Okay, I, I found so many more. Come on! You killed my minion. Okay. So many more. And the well. And they cannot touch me. And I feel ah. Uh, and people are getting in my way. And it's unpleasant. Many more. Okay, let's see now. I take. One of you, a few Uzis, yeah, champion Uz something. As you can see, I'm really sustainable because of the high toughness. I lay down the well, I blind them even some more, even though it's an overkill. And four mobs, I don't even need to add my bleedings on them to kill them didn't even use bloody power and epidemic so it's uh, a really sustainable build and the passive feeling I keep getting keeps me in the game keeps me in in the, in the fight so let's see this tiny thing but this is not enough let's get some more let's get these guys and now we use epidemic and blood is power and we use that is one percent back our conditions we created on ourselves and we AOE everything without any problems and if things get even worse you can go into plate form you can lay down another well and I can simply I even took my hands off the <laughs> I even took the hands off the mouse for a few seconds. I was waving them in the air. So it's a really sustainable build, really good damage, really good AoE damage. What more can you want? So as you can see the <coughs> the as you can see I ended up at 25 stacks of bleeding and the damage that comes out of this monster is Massive is actually massive and blood is power Epidemic even though it's a single target just so we get some extra healing full HP and I can continue without any any problems whatsoever and Let's say a million monsters appear now you can use uh, And let's say some more monsters appear now you can you ah there we go some Come here. And you come here. Oh. See? I made it tougher now. <laughs> okay. We stack them up on our main target as much as we want. And then we use Epidemic. And they melt away. And we stay in here to fill up a bit kill even more and continue from where we left off and oh look it's another monster we switch to staff we fear that one if we wanted we apply mark of blood regeneration which, go, which goes well with other regeneration and bleeding we have shield poison and transfer condition which goes well with consume condition and the dagger so basically we are set to do anything in any situation and A with the crap out of it. everything without worrying about anything. This is the, 
the most survivable and sustainable mode of damage. Ah, oh, come on, I wanted to solo this game. <laughs> anyway, this is the most survivable and sustainable form of damage. You don't have to worry about anything. I know in the past uh, the builds I was making were a bit tough at times. They were hard to obtain. The items were hard to obtain. The Triforce Amulet, I know. <laughs> But it's a requirement for the build to work. So <coughs> this is uh, the condition build works for well in any dungeon. Now that these guys are here, if I want to play support, I lay down a well for them, and now the Ooze does cannot hit them either. If I want to further support, I lay lay down some regeneration while I apply even more bleeding. I can lay down poison and chill. I can, if the guy has some conditions on him, I lay down Putrid Mark and if need be, I can A with fear to save the target. So, this was the condition build. This was the condition answer. A very important piece of information at the end. The final stats are 50% critical strike chance. I'm back. Hmm. Uh, 2600 armor, 1700 condition damage and 133 bleeding duration alongside almost 22,000 HP. Uh, the thing is that this build, this gear, if you obtain this gear, you can do World v World. The only thing that differs in World v World are the traits which can easily be respect without any effort. So. Tomorrow or in two days tops, I'm going to release same gear, Condition Lancer, World v World dedicated build, and one or two days after that, I'm going to do the same build, but adjust it for structured PvP because there's a uh, there's some things that weren't possible in the past, but now there have been modifications to the Necromancer being done, and you can play the Necromancer much differently. So, I hope you found this video useful. I will leave in the comments below the links and also a short summary of the items you needed in case you don't want to replay the entire video just to find the items. So this was my version and my take on the Condition Mancer build. <coughs> I hope you, you guys found this video helpful. Comment in the section below, favorite, subscribe, this uh, always helps. and. Um, until next time, enjoy your gaming and have a good day.